Page. That's what they sell. Well, when you go in to a casino, everyone buys, everyone eats. No one goes out. That's fine. Everyone buys and everyone eats. And it's like any other kind of sales. I mean, no, it's not like any other kind of sales if you're talking food. But but maybe to some extent, you're gonna get a few automatic purchases. You're gonna have to you're gonna have to earn a few, and then you're really gonna have to work for a few. Well, here, here, here's what I will say is this. If I go on a contention that I can't sell or I will have to sell, then it then the onus is on me at that point to make that sell. For instance, when I did my first patent and trademark, a lot of people said, Damn, you gotta sound crazy as hell. Who are you? Bruce Wayne? Batman? You know they made fun of me. Call me all kinds of names. Batman. Next thing they knew. I had a patent that was sanctioned by Major League Baseball, and then I had my products in MLB. I didn't want to be the guy selling t-shirts. I wanted to be the guy with the product in MLB. So now my stuff got in Major League Baseball. Now, I couldn't step back. I did hear the cries of, like, man, you're going to have to work harder, man, you're going to have to do this, man, you're going to have to do this, or, dude, you need to do this. Is the business self-sustaining? Oh, yeah. yeah. Because what you do is you trade, you sell the patent and or trademark. That's what you do. Mm -hmm. That is residual smoke. I tell people all the time. You want to it? Go to a shop where you see every day you see uh, dry cleaners. I want people to get thinking this this, this mindset. Go to a dry cleaners every day. People go to a dry cleaners and come out. Every person come out with three or four items at least. I don't give a damn about the dry cleaners. But who's making the hangers? That's, that, that's what I'm saying. That mindset. Because if you can get the guy that's making a hanger, right. you can become the person that's right. making a hanger. hanger. To go you then work. make those decisions. I don't need to be out there. When Dave Justice had on that two-tone glove and everyone was harping. Well, that's a badass glove. Like, um, this. When he was in the, uh, uh, playing for the Yankees, playing in the World Series. That was my type of trade. I made the mail on that. What, the two-tone uh, two glove? Right. Is it? The two-tone undercuff glove. Why was that significant? Because when you up the bat, you never seen a baseball bat commercial. Can you pass me a big bat right here? Uh, you've never seen a baseball bat commercial, have you? Or baseball glove. But the advertisers make their money off of the person who's batting. So if I'm up the bat and or I'm on the deck, that's the advertiser. Yeah, Wilson, whatever. Right. But the problem was, what I saw was every time you unstrapped it, you couldn't see the logo. They lost millions of dollars just based on that. Millions of dollars of free advertising. Well, I cannot pay you your worth. There is a net worth and there is a, let's just say, a worth that I, I can't, it's an intrinsic value, <laughs> call it that way. In other words, if I can say that your logo will be seen by X amount of viewers. That's a lot of money. Yeah, you can ask for a lot of money. Exactly. So if you're playing for the New York Yankees or Atlanta Braves who have networks that blast the logo out at the time that what you're doing this, you can ask for more money for that patent and or trademark if you had a player that played for the Yankees or the Braves. So what, you took the Wilson logo from here to here, put I it on? Put it, no, I, I changed the strap. You switched the strap to the back. You know, 99.9% Ah, I got you. So the, so the Wilson stays here and you unstrap from the back and the glove Boom. still comes off. Boom. But you still see the look. Right, no matter what. That's making residual... And you, you patent the strap from the back? So that's what, mecha that's what mechanics use. I got a picture of it right here. That's what mechanics use. What do you mean? Yeah, strap from the back. It doesn't come across the top. It always comes from the back. Mechanics gloves? No. They may have some infringement right. This was done in 1990. No, man, I believe you. Well, no, I don't care. There it is. That's him in the World Series using that same glove. That says GPB. That was for Georgia Pine Bats. That was the first one in the World Series. They have justice. That was all good, man. You know? So, no, no, what I'm saying was, this is how we need to think as individuals and or. I think it's not that we don't think. We haven't been taught to think in the bigger arena. You know, I play golf with this Jewish guy who is sitting down telling me the difference. The principles of making money. The 
principal is making money. Now right. it's making money. Do you, yeah, I'm a nuclear engineer from Cal Berkeley. I'm going to make my man. Yeah, and I'm an enforcement officer. Huh? Right now, well, I'm a fed. We just right. Over here. Oh, you right. you you I'm good, good. So I'm cool. I got 23 years. But that's not going to give me that house in Brookhaven Buckhead that I built. That I did build my wife and I live in. That's not going to pay for that. But we'll pay for it as a patty, a trademark, and or these other ideas to create that residual flow. That means it's good for me so once I gave a speech for my family reunion, I had to follow up by Dr. Barbara Fowler, who just wrote a book about six years ago on breast cancer. That's my customer. I said, okay, it's your turn. They picked me and I was like, my dad said, whatever you do, don't get up there talking that nuclear engineering shit, because you'll lose everybody. I said, cool. I said, well, dad, what am I talking about? I said, talk about creation. Talk about, it. think about it. Come back and talk about something you learned, because you know how to create. So what I told everybody was, do y'all know Puff Daddy? Everybody was like, yeah, we know Puff. I was like, none of y'all gonna be Puff Daddy. That's just the facts. One or two may in a million. But look, here's something you can strive for. Every time Puff Daddy makes a CD, think about it. Who makes the jewel cases that the CD goes to? That person right there you can strive to be. And when Puff Daddy goes out, Shania Twain. Or Garth Brooks, or whomever, whoever's making that CD jewel case, you get what I mean? If, if they make a million dollars, they make a million or sell a million units, you sold a million units. 